Okay, um, here we are. Uh, we are here with Anders Lehmann. Uh, he's a lecturer uh, at uh, Aarhus University. And here are his lessons from using IPython uh, as a notebook uh, for, for classes. Thank you, Ar Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, as uh, it was said, I work at the University of Aarhus, a school of uh, engineering. And, well, if you see the, the peculiar thing on the up, up top left, it's because University of Aarhus has uh, bought a fund, a special fund. So it's actually an A and a U. And down here we have uh, U and I. Versity. So, well, it was probably very expensive, but uh, kind of useless. <laughs> okay, so I teach physics uh, to engineering students, electronic engineering, the first year. So, uh, and my talk is about how I used the uh, IPython notebook for, for that. So, but first, I come from Denmark. Denmark is a small country in the northern, northern part of Europe. Uh, well, maybe you don't know. Uh, and sorry for the picture quality. It's uh, the projectors missing some colors, maybe. But uh, we won the European Sun Contest this year, if you, if you didn't know. And of course, uh, also we. Uh, Denmark is the birthplace of the famous philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, which uh, we, are, we are celebrating his uh, 200 years uh, anniversary. Well, anyways, let's move on. It's just metadata. So, the short version, IPython is an awesome tool for, for teaching. So, now we could just go home, right? Well, mm, there are bits that we could do better. And actually, I also think that it's, uh, the IPython notebook system is actually, um, it has the potential to, to be a platform to, to uh, build a new, new teaching uh, uh, tools. Uh, and I'll present some ideas later in the, in this, uh, in the talk. So, okay, teaching physics. Well, uh, teaching physics to engineering, electronic engineering students is uh, a challenge, I think, because when they come to uh, the engineering school, they really want to learn about electronics. So it feels kind of, or they tell me that it feels kind of, of weird that they have to uh, learn physics because, well, we just want to to make electronics. So couldn't we just couldn't you just learn uh, uh, things that they could use? So uh, often the the students are like this guy. So what can uh, the teacher do? What should the teacher do in order to uh, engage uh, the students uh, in in the um, in the, the validity of physics as a, a topic in uh, engineering school. So, uh, another challenge is that well, it, it's, uh, physics are, is considered uh, very uh, uh, hard, and, and, and in some cases, the way that we are, are teaching physics at, uh, at the university is, is abstract. Uh, for instance, what is the field? Okay, we can, if we have an, uh, two uh, charges uh, of opposite uh, polarity, we can draw uh, drawings like this, and, and we say that this is a field, but uh, we, you can't really see a field. You can see the effects of a field, but the field is uh, an abstract thing that we, we have to build an image uh, of in, inside our minds, because we can only observe the, uh, the actions of the field. So, and also, uh, how does semiconductor work? Well, okay, 
that may be more uh, of interest for uh, electronic engineers, but in order to, to um, delve into the, the physics behind semiconductors, you have to go kind of uh, deep into, into uh, quantum physics and, and uh, stuff like that. So again, it, it becomes quite uh, abstract because, well, uh, as we all know, quantum physics is not an easy uh, topic and it's, it's kind of hard to, to find the right balance between uh, the, uh, the a, a level of understanding and, and uh, well, the time that's given for the topic. So, you, of course, you, as a teacher, you were, you're tempted to go into very much detail in order to maybe deepen the understanding of, of the topic. But then, on the other hand, you might lose the interest of the uh, students. So you have to, to strike a balance uh, there. And um, so, again, um, if things get abstract, the, the engineering students are going to tell me as a teacher, that, why should I care? Because I can't really use these, uh, these abstract concepts to anything. So, and my, uh, in this semester, I have taught uh, electrophysics and uh, a little quantum theory to understand the semiconductors. And, and I tell the students that, well, the goal for this semester is for you to understand the physics behind the electronic components. And it seems to strike a, uh, an, a nerve because, of course, they want to do electronics. So maybe it's not too stupid to, to understand the physics behind the, uh, the electronic components as well, resistors, inductors, capacitors, and semiconductors. So, uh, so that's, that's the, the, the challenge that we, we are facing as uh, teachers uh, of physics uh, on, on first year engineering schools. So, um, so in order to engage uh, the students, uh, teachers are always looking for, for new ways of, uh, of, of presenting the, the, the curriculum. Uh, and this year I've, I've found uh, the iPod notebook uh, because, well, uh, I, needed, I needed a tool so that I could uh, do uh, online calculations or calculations during class. So that uh, in a, an easy and <laughs> elegant way, and well, I, I, I tried uh, iPad and notebook, and and I was re really pleased with the results. It's it's very easy to use. It runs in a browser. It's uh, you have this interactive prompt, so you can just you could ju you could use it as a calculator and but you could also it, it, it because it's a python uh, prompt you can uh, evaluate uh, python uh, uh, scripts you could you could you could there, there's it feels that there's really no limit to what you can do with uh, with ipython notebook because whenever you try something new something more uh, more complicated or hard well it's uh, the notebook just follows along. I haven't found the, the boundaries of, of this uh, yet, so so I I'm, I'm, I must say that I'm really pleased with it. Uh, uh, one thing that the students mention is that it's kind of nice that they, that the tool combines uh, both uh, text, uh, images, and, uh, and and code and calculations. And uh, and you can create uh, you can create uh, figures uh, online uh, dynamically, so it, it feels very complete as a tool. So how many have, of you have, have tried IPython notebook? So very many. So I, I'll show some short demos. Well, if you have tried it, you know what it can do, of course, but. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, I can show you some, some uh, small demos uh, of what I've uh, been doing in, in class. So to continue about the, the IPython notebook, um, the way that I uh, approached it, it was a way to find a, uh, a, a Python substitute for MATLAB. 
and, and actually, because it runs in the browser, it, it feels very much, uh, uh, or very much more elegant than than uh, the MATLAB. Because well, it, MATLAB is kind of a large program; it takes some time to start up, and and uh, you ho have all these weird windows, and you you're not you're not completely sure where where the figures that you are creating where they are going to turn up, but. Uh, but uh, when you use iPad notebook, you have all things uh, uh, gathered in, in a, a single window, and it's uh, uh, quite nice. So, uh, and, and because we are using Python, of course, we have the added benefit that it's now it's a MATLAB that can count. Uh, as some of you might know, that MATLAB arrays start at one, which is well. Let's not go there. But of course, it's the wrong way to do it. Uh, the students are used to use uh, not MATLAB but MathCat, uh, uh, and so I was kind of curious if if they would uh, uh, think that it was a stupid idea to learn a new tool. Um, but uh, they have actually embraced uh, the way that. Uh, the notebook uh, works uh, because they have experience that uh, in MathCAD you can because you have this free from form editing possibility, which is nice. But it, it takes some discipline uh, not to make your documents very uh, messy, and it's hard to to uh, to control the order of uh, calculations in, in in MathCAD. Sometimes, if you're not uh, if you're not disciplined, uh, so. So, uh, so the students actually uh, took well, uh, well embraced the iPython notebook uh, in a nice way, I think. <coughs> so, um, one thing that's not uh, by default in the notebooks that, that really is uh, needed when you are teaching physics is a way of calculating with physical quantities. But uh, luckily, there's an, uh, a physics extension, um, which is uh, it, it's a, uh, it's a small Python file which uh, uh, defines physical quantities. Uh, and uh, this file has a, uh, a way of, uh, uh, of registering uh, itself into uh, into the IPython uh, system so that uh, it can do tricks. Uh, well, I'll show you a small demo. Um, so, it, well, quantities, physical quantities of, is, of course, uh, a value and a, a unit. And, uh, and uh, in this physics e extension, uh, you are able to combine uh, units. So, uh, so if you multiply kilograms with uh, meters per second in, uh, squared, uh, then you can convert that uh, unit into Newton. Uh, and and this, um, this is part of the physics uh, extension. So it's, it's kind of nice when you have complicated uh, formulas that you afterwards can check if, if the result is of the right uh, uh, unit. Uh, apart from, from these physical quantities, and the way that you can calculate with physical quantities, the physics extension also uh, adds uh, a large uh, number of physical cons constants uh, to the IPython notebook, so that you you don't have to define uh, gravity or uh, the mass of Earth and all those things. They are they are defined in uh, in the uh, uh, physics extension. Sometimes with strange names, but but uh, that's how it is. Uh, so, as I said, you can check if uh, if the units match your expectations, and uh, well, you have to use some uh, IPython magic uh, in order to to um, to start it. So, let's see how it works just quickly. So. I should go here. So, uh, of course, this is uh, maybe I should. Put it 
So this is uh, the IPython notebook. Um, and well, this is a normal IPython notebook uh, in, apart from this start show truck. Uh, I'll come back to that later, so don't, don't uh, think about it just yet. Uh, so in order to, uh, to load or start the physics uh, extension, you have to evaluate this uh, expression, so uh, just do that. And while, when it has loaded, it, it answers back with this, uh, with this message here. So uh, uh, the next uh, box here is an example of how you can combine uh, text and, uh, and, and graphics. So this is uh, text uh, uh, made in a markdown. So, if, so you put it in like this, so you have the, the markdown uh, uh, syntax, the double uh, asterisk is for emphasizing, and the, the, at the bottom you can see that you can insert uh, uh, graphics uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, input box. So I uh, evaluate it and then we can see the, uh, the graphics and the text from, from this problem that, that we are asked to solve. So, but don't, it, it's not important what, what the actual text is. So the next uh, input box, uh, we, uh, we are trying to use the values that we are given in the, uh, in the uh, exercise, and we'll, we'll put them in uh, as a value and a unit. Uh, and because of this physics extension, you can actually write it uh, the way that you like or used to. Uh, just write it like, uh, <coughs> like that, and if you if we evaluate it, it will be added uh, to the, uh, the Python shell that we are running. So we have these two. And next uh, up, and, and you see there's no output here because, well, uh, uh, the statement doesn't uh, make any output. So, um, so and we are, we are trying to uh, calculate the magnetic field from this, uh, this uh, coil. Yeah, so, and f to calculate that, there's, there are two parts. So there's a circle, circular part, and then there's a linear part. So we do it in two steps. Uh, first, we calculate the, 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 the circular part. Well, the, the formula is uh, not important for this case. And first, you can see there's a mu uh, zero. This is actually a, a constant, the magnetic permeability which is defined in the physics uh, module, so a physics extension. So you don't need to, to define it in your, uh, in your uh, notebook. It is already defined. And then we just calculate with the, uh, the input that we gave, the, the current and the radius. Um, and uh, we do it again for this linear part, and we add these two. And then uh, we, first we could see what, what the unit would be if we, uh, if we if we didn't we didn't convert it into Tesla, so then we get uh, this kilogram meters per uh, ampere per second squared divided by centimeters. Uh, so this is not what we want. We want to have it in uh, Tesla, so we can just convert it, and then we uh, we get uh, we get a more nice uh, output. Uh, you can see that I use the more modern uh, formatting method to, to format uh, the output of, um, of, uh, of the result. And actually, in order to be able to use that, I had to, uh, to extend the physics e extension because, well, it's kind of old, so there's no modern formatting method in, in that. But, uh, uh, it should be in the physics module uh, if you go get it now. Uh, okay. So, are there any questions for for this part? Okay. Great. Okay. Let's move. But but it it was really for to uh, to show that we can have graphics and text, and we can uh, we can uh, use uh, we can. Pre Prepare, we could write our uh, physical quantities as we want. Uh, there is a problem if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, say that the radius is 
is uh, five centimeters plus uh, five centimeters. Uh, that's not uh, allowed because we can't, uh, we can't, uh, it's a syntax error. So we can't pass this, this is not uh, uh, Python. But uh, the physics extension do some tricks so we can actually uh, do it like this. It's not that nice, but it, it works. So uh, uh, one thing that doesn't work is that we can't, we can't uh, write it in uh, two lines. Uh, we can't write it like uh, this. Uh, and that's really a problem in IPython that I hope will be fixed in, in the next uh, version, but uh, well, don't, don't uh, count on it. So let's move this away. So, okay, let's move back to the presentation. Uh, yes, so. so that's the physics extension that I think it, it's kind of crucial to, to have that when you're teaching physics so that you don't, you don't, um, uh, well, it's really, it's not a course about uh, the units, so it, it should be put uh, aside, but it's still uh, important that you, you have these uh, unit checks when, when you do uh, uh, exercises. Uh, so that's, uh, so. So how to make physics uh, interesting? Well, uh, maybe it's a wrong uh, question because it, maybe it should be how do I make physics interesting to my students? And at least that part is not a solved problem. I think I have seen uh, videos on the internet with very good physics teachers and they seem to be able to engage their students, but uh, well, uh, it's not always the case when I teach. Uh, so, but uh, the thing that seems to work is to do a lot of exercises, a lot of uh, examples, and preferably, preferably um, finding examples from, uh, well, real life, uh, or real life. Something that could be uh, considered uh, 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 important or something that the students might think that they would uh, face when they, uh, when they do, uh, when they are going to work as engineers. So, uh, so I, I, I try to, to pull in, uh, the Python notebook has been what, uh, what I used to use uh, uh, to make these examples uh, work uh, or, or calculate them. But of course I do, uh, do also do, use Blackboard uh, to, to do exercises and I, I use uh, videos uh, to, to show what other people are doing, uh, things that I, uh, it would take too long for me to, to, uh, to do that. So I, we have to, uh, as a teacher, I think you have to use uh, all the tools available to you in order to make, it, to make the, the teaching more uh, interesting and engaging. Um, uh, uh, so, yeah. so, how to measure if IPython is uh, IPython notebook is uh, working? Well, I, I did. I call it exp an experiment, but it's not very scientific uh, because, well, um, then I should have made double blinds. The semester, uh, so it's not very uh, scientific uh, or, or quantifiable, at least. But uh, anyway, so well, let's just call it an experiment. Anyway, so I, I didn't tell my students that now you are trying to now we are going to see something new. I just pulled it out of the hat and just started using it. So, uh, as you saw in the example, it, it was really quite simple, just calculations, just a calculator. So. Uh, they, they, and, and they almost didn't uh, notice that it was running in the browser. Uh, then uh, slowly I, I added uh, things, uh, 
uh, to, uh, so the complexity of the examples uh, were rising, and, uh, um, and um, well, of course, first I added these units, and then I started to make small uh, Python functions, and uh, and lastly I, uh, I I use I showed that it could be used for plotting as well, uh, and I've, I, I've actually. I think it was uh, uh, it was kind of nice experience that we, we just uh, that they they just slowly uh, got familiar with uh, the uh, the setup and uh, and, and uh, by by using only simple expressions and uh, simple stuff, I slowly trained them to. Uh, Um, uh, there were more questions to the subject at hand. We we uh, used interactive learning by uh, trying to tweak the examples. What if the the length of the coil or the radius were larger or smaller? So we we could play around with with the uh, uh, with with the questions and the problems that we were solving. Uh, so that's that's my observations. Uh, uh, anyways, so uh, and as uh, a side effect, the, the student learned basic uh, Python. I exposed them to how to make functions and how to make loops and how to do plots and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, that the students uh, gained uh, skills in, in 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 Python, but they were at least they were able to to read Python when the, the the semester was over, and they didn't feel that it was strange. It it came just a little by uh, by little and uh, felt kind of natural. That's my interpretation, anyway. So, what did the students say? This is uh, the evaluation of the semester that I did. Uh, and here I asked them.
Okay, I'll try that. Um, okay. So let's go to the bad things. Um, and the most bad thing is that there are almost no security uh, in the IPython uh, system, in the notebook system. You can, you can uh, set it up so that you need to have a, um, a password to, to change a thing in, in notebooks. But it's uh, well, it's it's not the right kind of security in, in my mind. So, and, and if you just have public uh, notebooks, you allow people to do awful things to your computer. It actually has, um, uh, it has access to, to your hard drive and stuff like that. So you could, you could either let people start uh, large calculations that would. Uh, uh, render your computer useless, or you could actually have them delete uh, stuff and stuff, uh, stuff uh, things like that. But if you are in a closed group with uh, and you trust people, it, it's okay. And well, I have to grade my students, so I trust them to not make me angry. Uh, but that's I, I think that's the most uh, serious uh, uh, lack uh, uh, in IPython notebook. Uh, as of now. There are ways to get around it, but they are a little bit annoying, uh, I think, but uh, maybe uh, it would be nice to have uh, have it wrapped up in the IPython notebook uh, uh, from start. Okay, so I, yeah, uh, let's go uh, on. The, my conclusion is that uh, it's an excellent tool for teaching. Uh, but it's not the only tools that you should use as a teacher. Uh, you should use all the tools that are available to you. So uh, I, I use the Blackboard a lot. I, I use slides, uh, videos, uh, try to engage uh, the students into uh, group teaching, uh, peer teaching, where well, the students teach each other. Uh, we do a lot of exercises and stuff like that. So it's a whole range of, of tools that we uh, have to use as a teacher. So, uh, how could we make IPython better for teaching? Well, it would be nice if there was a system to do quizzes uh, in, in IPython. I think it should be possible, but I haven't really figured out how and yet, but maybe I will. Um, you can, it could be nice to, uh, to give the students uh, notebooks so that they could could learn stuff and then they could play with the formulas uh, inside the uh, notebook. It's almost uh, possible today that you can't export these uh, these notebooks, uh, but it, it, it c there there's still some setup that needs to be, be done. But if you don't want all the students to to uh, install uh, IPython themselves, but uh, uh, so I'm I'm working on how to uh, have uh, a, a, a well, have have an IPython uh, workshop, uh, uh, IPython server running on the school's uh, computer or something. But uh, then the security thing is uh, very uh, pertinent again. Um, uh, I think that this group learning, w w this failed experiment with the tow truck, I think that it's uh, it would be nice to uh, explore that further. Um, and. And I, I, I could imagine that we could do uh, examinations, uh, uh, written examinations and grading in the IPython notebook system as well. But uh, that's also, uh, well, that's a wish list. Uh, okay, th further, this is not so much about teaching, but uh, more th things that I would like to have in the IPython when I'm, I'm doing for a research. So if it would be nice if there was a, uh, an integration with version control systems uh, so that you actually check in when uh, when you have done changes that you want. It's it's part of this uh, automatic save thing, but this is, this is different anyway. So, And maybe we could grow the IPython notebook system into a uh, IDE. Maybe it already is. There are some uh, integrations to the WIM system. Uh, so uh, maybe it will, will become uh, an IDE by itself. 
Uh, okay. Well, one thing that I w would really like is that that I could have given this presentation in the IPython notebook system. So if, uh, for instance, we could integrate the IPython uh, uh, notebook with the uh, impress.js uh, uh, system, uh, that, that would be one idea that uh, could be very nice. Because then you had both the presentation for but but we also had the possibility to to do online calculations and uh, plots and stuff like that so okay thank you i think you will have to to switch the mic okay uh, are there any questions okay yeah um yeah uh, i will give the mic In I, uh, so the question is: Is there any way of visualizing t time series as, as it evolves? So, um, as I understand the question, you're asking if there are animations in uh, in iPython. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the plotting in iPython is based on uh, matplot matplotlib. Uh, and there are some crude and very clumsy ways of doing uh, animations. Uh, uh, I have tried it and I, I didn't really like it. Uh, so th that's an area that could be improved. Uh, you have to think that, uh, have to uh, remember that uh, the IPython notebook is running in the browser, but uh, the calculations is done on the server. So the server has to, to uh, calculate the plots make PNGs of these plots and then send it to the, the browser. So there's, there's a round trip delay that kind of screws up these animations. But maybe there are, there are, uh, maybe there are possibilities of, of doing uh, MP4 of these animations and then upload the MP4 to, to the browser and then maybe that would be more th smooth, I don't know. But uh, it, it's an area that could use improvement. Other question? Yes. How do so? The question is: How do you do uh, debugging in the notebook? Well, uh, it's. Uh, I think that the debugging part is not working very well in the notebook system. Uh, uh, I, in the IPython, there is a support for um, for the PDB, so you can actually, when you're running it on your uh, on uh, in your terminal, you can actually drop into the PDB where where you need. So it, it's pretty much the same as uh, as the normal interactive pr uh, prompt uh, stuff. Okay, more questions. Okay, just one more thing. So, so I'm from Denmark, and well, that in Denmark there's two crazy guys. They have decided to uh, that one of them should be uh, uh, should go should go into space. Uh, but of course, it's too boring and too expensive to just ask some Russian or Virgin to galactic to to do that so they are building uh, a rocket system so that one of them can be propelled into space this is not the rocket that they are going to use it's just uh, a test that they did three weeks ago um, and, and the interesting part uh, apart from having sea launches and, and rockets uh, is that it's uh, uh, it's a guided uh, missile. It's a guided rocket. So it's a. I, I think it's the first amateur uh, rocket that actually have active guidance. And then it's launched from sea, and it's. Uh, uh, well, they're amateurs, and they, well, they they do think differently, and it's quite interesting. I think so. It's applied physics. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Anders. <laughs>